All right, so here we've got chapter 10. We're talking this chapter about pricing. And if you remember, uh, we talked about the four pieces of marketing. Uh, we said that that's the mix you need to work so that customers will come back to you. You get your product, get price. your price, get your promotion, get your place. We talked about product, which is the first P last chapter, chapter eight. Yes. In chapter 10, we'll be talking about price. So how do we set the price? So let's see what we've got in this chapter. We will talk about what's the definition of price and we will take some major pricing strategy, mainly two. And then we will talk about internal, external consideration that will affect prices. So the definition of price. The price, it's the amount of money charged uh, for a product or value or, or service. It's the sum of all the value that consumer will give up in order to gain the benefit of having or using a product. So maybe uh, if you use a room for one night, you pay $100. You can pay 50, you can pay 10, you can pay 1,000. It will depend, right? And at the same time, if you buy, you guys remember when you buy a cup of tea, how much is a cup of tea? 20 riyal, 50, 100, 150. You know, right here in the cafeteria is 150. You go to some hotel, you pay 700 riyal. Yeah, go to Papa Ruti, 750. You go to a uh, Mufan Peak Hotel, you pay 1,500 for a cup of cappuccino. See? So here is the price that people will have to pay. So price is the only element in the marketing mix that will produce revenue. All other elements will what? Will just represent a cost, right? You have to pay for the product, you have to pay for promotion, pay for a place or location. Uh, but for the price, that's money you get. Do you want to price very high or very low? Or it depends. That's the main challenges when it comes to this chapter. So we will understand how much customers or consumers place on the benefits they receive from products or uh, and uh, setting the price that will capture that value. So in this chapter, we're talking about how you create, uh, uh, how the major pricing work. First, we need to look at product cost. How much it actually costs you? So if we're talking about a pizza, pizza will cost you, uh, how much is the total cost? Let's say 300, maybe that's variable cost. Remember when we said, uh, there's also a cost you have to pay rent. You also have to pay, uh, let's say uh, you use an oven, this oven will cost you money to buy. So you have to pay for that. So maybe there's like a price floor where below this price, you actually make no profits. And then at the same time, there's like a price ceiling, which is like the highest price people can pay. And that will be no demand above that uh, price. That will be the price. So if you look at the pizza, how much is a price ceiling for a pizza? 4,500, you know, above that price, no one will buy. Uh, and at the same time, below 300 riyal, no one is going to, you know, sell pizza for 300 or less because that's the cost of this pizza. What, uh, 1,500 or 2,500. Okay, so understand this idea of a price ceiling and a price floor. Okay. Yes. No? Now let's look at this idea of a value-based value, uh, value -based pricing. Value-based pricing, it uses the buyer's perception of value, not the seller cost, as the key to pricing. Price is considered before the marketing program is set. So value-based pricing is a customer-driven and cost-based pricing is product-driven. Did you guys understand anything? Mm -hmm. There are two types of pricing. Pricing number one, product driven so that comes from the product itself let's say you make a chair you make a chair and you sell a chair now if you want to do it a product driven pricing you will see how much this chair will cost how much would you pay how much paint you have to spend that will be the total cost and then you mm -hmm. add maybe a five percent profit and then you sell it that will be product driven and that will be cost based that's the first type the second type is value-based. Value-based pricing, it's dependent on the customer 
what the customer values this product. Let's say, for example, you're going to buy a chair, and this is your wedding chair. So on your wedding day, you will sit on this chair. This chair is very valuable to you. And you're willing to buy $1,000 for a chair that is very great so that you can keep it the rest of your life in memory of your wedding. So that's a value-based pricing. Is it product-based? No. It's customer-based. It's customer-driven. Do you see? It's value-based. It's customer-driven. Are you guys okay with those two? But did you, uh, sometime, uh, limit the... Uh, Let's take another example here. If you look at cost-based pricing uh, for tea, how much does the tea cost? Tea. Tea. If you get this lipped on, uh, you know, it will cost you like how much? Ten riyad? You know, if you add 5%, say you add 5 riyad profit, 50% profit, let's say 20 riyad. That's going to be product-driven price. And it's cost-based pricing. But when you sell tea inside the Mufambik Hotel. And the same tea. It's the same tea. It's just the location is different. Okay. Maybe people will be willing to pay 500 real for that one tea. Some people will say, okay, take 500, just give it to me. And they will get exactly the same tea. But customers are willing to pay that. Yeah. We call that value-based because there's a value to get the tea this time in this location. Do you see? While maybe in other locations you are not willing to. Yeah. Did you guys get it? Yeah. Now let's look at those two different types. We have cost-based and value-based. Cost-based, it starts from the product. You determine its cost. You set the price based on the cost. So the cost is 10, you add 50% become 15. Can convince customers that this is a good value. That's how you sell it. But if you do a value base, which is the other way, here you actually need to assess customer need. What do people need? They need to relax. They need a tea at this moment, at this specific location. Do you see? And here you set your target price to match customer per se value. You start to think, customer is willing to pay how much? Customer can pay 200, we we'll charge 200. Customer can pay 500, we'll pay 500. But customer will think it's reasonable 1,000, we'll pay 1,000. The reasonable. Tell me about the reasonable. Determine the cost that can be incurred. Maybe you are willing, okay, I will give it to you for 500, plus I will give you free internet. You go to uh, Paparotti, 750 is their coffee give you free internet they give you music maybe some service maybe someone smile <laughs> more sugar let your kids play you see so maybe you are willing to do that and then you design the product that will deliver the desired value so the customers will get the value I can get my kids to play have internet relax someone smile at me read a newspaper pay 750, I'll go. You see? And then we've got something called good value pricing. Good value pricing, it offers the right combination of quality and good service and fair price. You see? So good value pricing is like in the middle. It's not cost and it's not value. It's like in the middle. Some companies have a strategy to go with the everyday low pricing. Anyone have heard of everyday low pricing? They charge constant everyday low price with few or no temporary price discounts. If you go and you buy, do you remember a place you go and you buy and the prices you know they are always the cheapest? You don't do a lot of shopping. You just go to that place, you know they are cheap. Which one? Let's say maybe, let's say for car, car spare parts. Is there a place where you go, they're always cheap? Spare, Spare parts, no. Let's say you go to a supermarket. Which supermarket are always cheapest? Go to the You know their prices are always, every day they sell low prices. That's a strategy. So if you want to buy quantity, you go there. 
because you know you're going to save. Some companies, on the other hand, they're more of a high-low pricing. Mm -hmm. Do you know a company, they charge you 6,000 for clothes. Let's say for a shirt, 6,000 real. And then they do a discount. They sell the same shirt for 4,000. Then they make another big discount. They sell the same t-shirt for 2,000. And then they make a big sell for 1,000. And then you come back later, no discount, 6,000. <laughs> yes. Have you seen those? Uh, yeah, go to City Max, City Max yeah. right? Go to Red Tag. You see, those people, they always have discounts and they send you SMS. This week, 50%. You go, it's 50%. You know, after three weeks, four months, we have big sale, 80% off. You go there, the t shirt is for 1000 why well, this strategy, they charge high price on everyday basis, yeah. but they run frequent promotions to lower the price temporarily on some items, not everything. They tell you this section is discounted only. So the customers, they come, one customer, they come, they like it, they buy 6,000. Some customer, they like it, ah, 6,000 expensive, they don't, they wait. This way they can capture more money Right? People who are willing to pay, they pay. People who don't want to pay, they can wait. And it also gives them information. If everyone come and buy at the 6,000, they know it's a great product. If they put 6,000 and no one buy, they know this is not a very good product. So next time maybe they don't have more of it or less of it. Value added pricing, it will attach value added features and services to differentiate offers, support higher prices, and build pricing power. Many companies, they try to build pricing power. Do you know what we mean by pricing power? No. How can we have a good power and reason behind our high prices? For example, you know, they tell you this is, you know, they make it prestige place. They make music that is very classic. Uh, they, uh, they make a very nice decoration. They make uh, their employees, they have to smile, and they're dressed very neatly. Then you understand, okay, this is why I am paying they high. Reasons. They give reasons for the customer why this is high price. The more they do that, the more they provide value. You know, it's a value when you go to a place and it's clean, nice decoration, you have a good time. That's value. So you're willing, you understand why it's expensive. Do you see? But if you go and it is ugly and doesn't, people are not neat, why should I pay this? Cost-based pricing, we said that's when you set it based on what? Cost or customer value? Cost. So you look at the cost, which is how much you produce it, distribute, sell, any fair rate of return. So you want 20% profit or you want 100% profit, depending on what product and what business. Cost-based pricing will add a standard markup to the cost of the product. So, uh, you know what's a markup? Markup is how much profit margin you make. Okay. Are you guys okay with this? Yes. All right. 